Yes, a warm welcome to the program. Then we start with that story from Southall last Sunday, the case of mistaken identity. What happened here is two horses from the same stable, that of Ivan Furtado, went to the races at Southall. They ran in the wrong races. There was a complete mix-up on the day. And this, of course, just uh, eight or nine months after a similar set of circumstances at uh, Yarmouth, not entirely the same, obviously, where a three-year-old ran instead of a two-year-old there. So uh, to talk about this from the BHA, we can welcome to the programme the Director of Integrity and Regulatory Operations, Brant Dunshay, who kindly joins us this morning. Hi to you, Brant. Yeah, good morning, John. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Brant. Just, uh, just curious, though, is the mood one of um, anger or embarrassment at the BHA this morning? Oh, look, there's no dispute, John, that we're incredibly disappointed about what's occurred. It, it's unacceptable and it should not have occurred. Uh, of course, as you mentioned in your introduction, uh, following the Yarmouth incident last year, we put in place measures to mitigate the risk of such a, a thing happening again. And, and of course, uh, some seven or eight months later, we are not at all happy that we're in a situation where uh, a similar set of circumstances have unfolded despite putting processes in place to mitigate it. So were the practices put in place after Yarmouth just not robust enough then? Look, uh, we, we put in place a, a process which, um, if uh, appropriately uh, followed in the subtle incident, uh, would have eliminated this happening. Um, unfortunately, um, whilst I can't speak about the specifics of this particular matter because it's before the disciplinary panel next week, uh, human error has been what has led to this occurring. Right, oh, we're just trying to, obviously it's the, the focus of much debate here at the races and elsewhere, we're just trying to try and work out sort of the, the usual procedures on race day. With these, we worked out, Brand, that these two horses, they must have been checked on arrival at the stables and presumably must have been checked going into the parade ring as well. At least four times then checks were made and, and the mix-up wasn't spotted. Yeah, look, in terms of the uh, the processes, uh, we're certainly, um, again, I can't speak about the specifics, but we know the horses were identified on arrival at the race course. Um, again, we know there was a process that, that took place uh, as the horses left uh, the stable yard for their races, um, and it wasn't picked up on the race day. There's, there's, no, there's no stepping back from that. Uh, it, it, reflecting on the positive uh, that's come from from this uh, particular situation is that we do have now a process uh, of audit uh, where we internally look at the work of our own people uh, and and that's what's identified a discrepancy um, post race day uh, the following the following day after the races so that's what's initiated the investigation uh, to understand exactly what that discrepancy was and how how it's occurred um, and uh, as, a, as a group we came together we quickly um, put in place a, a thorough investigation it was conducted uh, in confidence just as we do with any of these sort of post race investigations and uh, the facts were gathered as quickly as possible in order for us to understand exactly what's occurred. Brant, am I right in saying then, on from that, that if one of these horses was sent for a drug test afterwards, had that not been called for we may never have known about this mix-up, may we? And that's worrying for the future, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's difficult to argue with you there, John. Uh, yes, the horse, one of the horses was sent away for, for post-race testing uh, and uh, it's the audit process that we, we now have which looks at our, our testing uh, data that has revealed the discrepancy. There's no, no disputing that. What we are focusing on is ensuring that uh, not only... Uh, is the, 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 the element of human error in the current process that we've implemented uh, removed, but um, identifying technological advances which can, uh, in fact, uh, eliminate that risk of human error. So we've already been working with the software company that has developed this device uh, in, in uh, collaboration with the BHA uh, to put in place a further check mechanism uh, as the horses are scanned out uh, leaving the stable yard for their races to confirm that it is the horse registered against uh, the race card entry. 
you, you would have thought, Brad, I mean, I'm sure this will come out in your um, published investigations. I'll ask you about the timing of which shortly. But you would have thought that there has to be scope for if you're dealing with some sort of mechanical device, if you've got a wrong horse, why not have a big red light, a huge alarm, flag it up straight away like that? It, it should be quite simple, shouldn't it? Yeah, look, I mean, it, it, absolutely, it should be simple. Uh, and uh, it should also be simple for um, for a horse to be identified against its name through a through a process of, of cross-checking uh, by, by humans. But unfortunately, you know, we can't always be satisfied that human error can't uh, occur. Um, so, yes, you're right, we're working with the software developers to develop what... Um, will be in effect that that red flag that, that you refer to, so that in the event that this was uh, to occur again, immediately if the individual who's performing the identification process was to miss something, it would it, the, the, the device um, the system would tell them that. Uh, two more quick things, please. Uh, firstly, about timings. Uh, obviously, this happened, what, some 12 days ago now, um, yes. Brandt. Any reason for not hearing about it up until now? And, and secondly, the timing, what's your anticipated uh, timing of uh, publication of a full and transparent report? Sure. Look, uh, this matter, as I uh, touched on earlier, was, in fact, not a matter that was identified on race day. This was a, a, a post-race day uh, um, discrepancy that was uh, picked up. Uh, in those instances, when our integrity team take hold of an investigation, uh, as is usually the case, w w we would undertake that investigation in confidence, and that's exactly what we've done in these circumstances. We can't be conducting an investigation um, uh, in public, so to speak. Uh, we need it to be an objective uh, thorough investigation which, which gathers all of the facts and evidence before we can be in any sort of position to be, first of all, uh, forming a view on whether or not um, a charge ought to be answered uh, and, and understanding what all the facts are before we actually inform the public of that. Now, uh, in this case, uh, a view has been formed that, that, that the trainer involved has charges to, to answer. That matter has now been put before the independent disciplinary panel and of course, it's you know inappropriate for, for us to comment on the specifics of the case when the matter's before an independent panel. Of course, the matter will, will be heard um, it, publicly and in a transparent way, as as are the cases um, before the independent disciplinary panel, and um, uh, it'll all be borne out during the uh, during the hearing and and in the published reasons thereafter exactly what's occurred. And there's no stepping away from what's occurred. Um, it's unacceptable. I, I, I absolutely acknowledge that and I'm focused on working hard to restore the confidence of, of the betting public and racing fans to ensure that they um, uh, have confidence in us that the right horse is racing on race day. There's nothing more fundamental to the integrity of the sport than that very fact and, and we're determined to address that. So, Brant, you can rule out without hesitation foul play in this case? Uh, absolutely. Um, we, 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 in terms of our investigation, what, what we will be putting before the panel is that um, th this is a case of um, accidental mistaken identity. There's no suggestion at all that there was any um, intentional wrongdoing done here or any, any sort of nefarious uh, um, activities at play. Brant Dunshay from the BHA, thank you for your time this morning. Very good of you. You're welcome. Thank you, John. So there we are.